Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Graphing Functions Using Input-Output Tables. This is part one. So functions, as we mentioned many times before, is one of the very most important concepts you will ever learn in math. And the concepts that we learn here with functions will be built upon later in calculus and even more advanced math and also science classes down the road. So the goal of this lesson is I want to explain what a function looks like in terms of f of x equals some stuff and represent it in terms of an input output table where numbers come into the input and we have the outputs which we call f of x. We're going to calculate the values in the input output table and then we're going to graph those values to see what they actually look like. So we're gra it's a graphing lesson, right? But more broadly, I also want you to have a feeling in your bones for what some of the most common functions look like. So before we actually get to the actual graphing, I want to draw a few simple di different flavors of functions, the most common functions that you will run into throughout all of your studies. So here at the very beginning, you have in your mind what the most common kind of applications in real life for this concept of a function really is. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, so first, before we do anything, we have to re uh, remember or recall what this concept of a function really is, all right? We have a box. It is a input-output type of box. We have inputs coming in on the left and we have outputs going out on the right. And what happens on the inside is calculation happens based on the input values. The inputs, we call them x values. It can be any number that you can think of feeding into this machine. And on the outputs, we have a, what we call a function of x. This is not multiplication. This means that we take the input values and we calculate with them. In the output, we call it function of x because we perform a calculation based upon x, and so we call it a function of x because we're calculating based on the x values. Now on the inside here, the actual function can be anything. It can be a line like 2x plus 3 or whatever. But here, for the sake of just drawing this, I'm going to say f of x is equal to x. The simplest function you can think of, right? Because if you remember, the equation of a line is mx plus b. So this is an equation of a line because there's a 1 in front of the x, so 1x plus 0, the y-intercept is 0, so we know that this is a line from our graphing of all the lines we have before. So if I put a number 1 in, then the output is also equal to 1. If I put a number 2 in, then the output, since it's equal to the input, is, is also number 2. If I put a negative 3 in, I get a negative 3 out, and so on. So this is what a general function is, the simplest one you could possibly think of. So let me do my best to sketch some of the most common functions we're going to come across here in math. And I'm going to make them very small uh, because I want to actually fit three of them side by side so that we can kind of compare and contrast them. And I'm going to do variations on these, right? So every one of these graphs is an, uh, kind of an xy graph here where the inputs are in the x direction here like this, and the output is the f of x. So you can think of it, really a function is the same thing as, we used to call it y is equal to blah, 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 mx plus b, or whatever it is, but now we broaden ourselves and we now consider other things than lines, so we call it functions because it can be any other, you know, other, lots of other shapes besides just a line. So for our simplest one, let's just take the simplest thing I can think of, f of x, is equal to x, which is what I've drawn in my little picture up, up here. What this means is that whatever x input I have, I just stick it in there and that's the same thing as the output. So you could think of this as y equals x is the same sort of thing. All right. Now if you draw this, this is going to be a line that goes straight through the origin at a 45 degree angle like this. Now, before we move on, how do you know this is a line? Because if you replace this with y, like we used to call it y equals mx plus b, the slope is 1, x plus b. So the y-intercept is 0, so this thing goes through 0, and the slope is 1. So rise over run, rise over run, rise over run. You can see that it forms a line. What I'm trying to get you to see is that the simplest kind of function you can have just has x to the first power here, and those form lines. Now there are other variations for different different kind of lines. We'll talk, talk about those in just a second. But in general, if your function just has an x term, like x to the first, it's going to be a line, right? And so you can see that uh, here. Now let's move along to another graph where I take for my second function, y, uh, instead of f of x equals x, we'll make it f of x equals x squared. And we're going to graph uh, a function like this here in just a minute, right? This is not a line. It does not 
follow, it doesn't follow the recipe of mx plus b, y is equal to mx plus b, because it's not just x here, it's x squared. So that changes things, right? And when you actually graph this, and we are gonna graph one in just a minute, it looks like this. It comes down and it goes back up. And my graph is not perfect. You have to kind of envision this being kind of nice and kind of smooth here in the bottom here. This is called a parabola. Now there are variations, depending on how I set it up, of exactly the shape and the size and where the, where the parabola is. But in general, if your function is the highest power is just x to the first power, you get a line. If the function, the highest power is x squared, you get a smiley face, or it could be upside down, depending on how, what the function is, but it's going to look like this parabola looking shape. Very common in nature. X squared functions pop up all the time. The law of gravitation between two planets has an x squared term in there. When you throw a baseball, it makes that curved path because uh, the when you study physics, you'll find out that there's a square term in there. So anytime you have that nice, pretty curved path like that, it's going to be a square in there somewhere. Now let's take a look at another one. We have x here. Let's take another function, f of x equals x to the cube. You do run into this sometimes as well. And what this function is going to look like is it's going to go up from the bottom, it's going to level out right here, and then it's going to go up like this. So it looks like an S like this. So how do I know what these shapes are? I know what they are because I've studied this before. You're not going to know what they are. You're not going to know. Nobody is born knowing what these things look like. So don't flip out if you're like, I don't understand. Well, you haven't learned it yet. Of course you don't understand yet. But if we make a table of values with inputs and outputs, then like if I put two in for the input, then the output's gonna be two squared, which is four. If I put three in for the input, then the output's three squared, which is nine, that's really high. But if I put four in for the input, four squared, 16 is the output. So you can see that as the inputs go, and if I put negative two in, I'll get a positive four, because it's squared. You can see that it gets very steep uh, because it's squared here. That's why it makes this shape here. And then when you, do a cube, you can see this is getting very, very steep as well uh, down here. And we're going to draw, uh, we're, gonna, we're actually going to do a problem here in just a minute with this. Okay. Now, I want to, underneath this, draw another graph, right? Another three graphs, actually. See if I can line them up. May not work out perfectly. I want you to know that nature is full of variety, all right? So these are the basic kind of the basic shapes of the basic most important functions I think you probably should really know. But there's lots of other examples uh, of this. So I could have x, I could have f of x. x, I could have f of x. Uh, x, I could have f of x. You know, for instance, I can have, and I'm just making this up, the general thing is f of x equals x. Okay, so I could have f of x is equal to 2x minus 6. I could have f of x is equal to 1 fourth x plus 16. You see, I, mx plus b, but the highest power is x. The highest power is x. The other numbers that are kind of like arranged around this thing, it changes kind of the shape and generally what the line will look like, but the, the thing that governs if it's a line is just that the highest power here is just x. So that's always going to form a line. So if I, I'm not graphing these specific things, but I'm trying to say that if you change the coefficients and the mx and the b and all that, all that's gonna happen is your line might look like this, or your line might look like that, or your line might look like this, or something like this. You might shift where the line is, you might change its steepness, maybe we have a very you know, shallow line going across like this, but it's always going to form a line when the highest power is x, all right? Here, if my base equation is f of x is x squared, I might have an equation uh, or a function that's like x squared, you know, minus three. Or I might have something more complex like uh, x squared, but then maybe I have minus two x and then plus four. You see, I can have an x squared and an x term here. The highest power is x squared. The highest power is x squared. When the highest power is x squared, you're gonna have some variation on this parabola shape, right? It might not be in the origin. It might shift it over here, right, like this or it might shift it down here and make it really, really, really steep. You know, really, really crammed together like this, like with a high steepness to it, right? Or it might actually go upside down, something like this, because you can play with these numbers and make it upside down. But you see, all of them have this parabola shape to it. So the base function when the highest power is x is a line like this, but if you play with the numbers mx plus b, the highest power is still x, you get a different type of line. 
When the highest power is x squared, then the variations when you play with the coefficients in the highest power of x squared, you still get some kind of parabola shape. It might be upside down, might be right side up, might be steep, might be skinny, might be moved, but it still looks like this. What if I had over here where the base graph is x cubed, what if I have you know, x cubed you know, uh, plus x squared? Or maybe I have another one, uh, x cubed uh, plus 2x squared, then you could have you know, plus x minus 7. You see I can string along different terms here, uh, and of course I messed up here, the highest power being x cubed here. But when the highest power in your function is x cubed, it's always going to look something like this, okay? Some sort of s. Now, instead of being on the origin, it might be over here, like this, by playing with these extra numbers here. Or it might go up and then it might curve way back down again and go up again. You see, I kind of like made the s more pronounced. Or it's going to be hard for me to draw it, but it could be upside down, flipped upside down, as I've flipped some of these other things upside down. So here in the beginning of the lesson, I mostly wanted to, before we actually do our problems, I want you to get the roadmap of the most common functions you will see. By far, the most common functions you'll see in real life are lines and parabolas with x squared terms. They pop up all the time, but we do see x cube equations as well. And you can see the basic kind of shape of these things here. Uh, and then, of course, if you expand and play around with it, as long as your highest power is x squared, it'll look something like this. If the highest power is x cubed, it'll look something like an s, but of course it'll look different, but it'll look similar. And if the highest power is just an x to the first, it'll be some sort of line. Now let's apply what we have learned to our lesson today. Keep those three types of classes of functions in your mind. Now we're going to take a look at this one f of x is equal to x minus 2. Now what, what do you think this is going to look like before we actually even do anything? This is going to be a line because the x power is to the first power. The x is to the first power. It doesn't matter the other numbers, the coefficients. If the highest power of x is to the first, it will be a line. mx plus b. Now we're going to graph that, but let's move along to this one just to, sh just, just to show you. What do you think this is going to look like? x squared minus 7 before you do anything. The highest power is x squared, so it's going to look like some kind of parabola somewhere, right? And what about this third one? The highest power here, x cubed plus 1, is a cube. So this is going to look like some kind of s. I don't know where it'll be until I graph it, but I know it's going to look like something like that. So before you even do anything, you know what these things should look like based on the first part of the lesson here. Now how do we actually graph it? When, when the rubber meets the road, what do we do? We have inputs. And we have outputs. Remember, the input number goes in, the calculation happens, the output comes out, we call it f of x. That's why f of x is in the output column, x is in the input column. If you take negative 4 and you stick it in here, then you'll have negative 4 minus 2. Negative 4 minus 2 is 6, so the output f of x is 6. Actually, negative 6. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6, so negative 6 goes there. If you put negative 2 in here, minus 2, Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. That goes in the output column. If you put a 0 in here, 0 minus 2 gives you an output of negative 2. If you put a 2 in here, 2 minus 2 gives you 0. If you put a 4 in here, 4 minus 2 gives you 2. Now you have your input-output table. Let's plot this stuff, and we should get some kind of line if we've done it correctly. So the first point here is at negative 4, comma, here's negative 5, here's negative 6. So there's the first point right there. Next point, negative 2 comma negative 4. Negative 2 comma negative 4 is right here. Next point, 0 comma negative 2 means right here. You can see this is forming a line. 2 comma 0, 2 comma 0 is right here. And then finally, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 2 is right there. And you can see this definitely does form a nice line, but just to, just to dot the i's and cross the t's, we will draw a line through it, just to make sure. So, you see what I'm getting at? We said before, if the highest power in what it is you're studying is an x uh, to the first power, even if the numbers in front and the numbers off, the, the, the constants are different, it's just going to change where the line is and maybe the steepness, the slope of the line. You can see that's what we have here. The equation is f of x is x minus 2. And of course, we have a line that shifted down from the origin and it has some steepness to it, but it looks like a line. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. Here we know this is going to look like some kind of parabola. Let's see what this looks like. If we put negative 4 in here, you have to make sure to take the entire negative 4 and square it because the x value is the negative 4. You have to wrap it inside parentheses to make sure you square the negative 4. 
Now, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, and 16 minus 7 is what? 9. So we have a 9 on the output right there. Next, if I put negative 1 in here, minus 7, this is going to give you a positive 1. And when you get 1 minus 7 is negative 6. You'll get a negative 6 right there. If a 0 you put in here, 0 squared minus 7, you're going to get a negative 7 because zero. this makes 0 and then you have negative 7 right here. And then a 1 you put in here, 1 squared minus 7 is 1 minus 7, which is negative 6. And then if you put a 4 in here, 4 squared minus 7, you're going to get 16 minus 7, which is going to give you a 9. So there you go. Notice that <clears throat> you have some symmetry here, right? Because you get the same output values and you have the same output values here as well. This is still a function because this output value goes with a different input and this output value goes with a different input. It's going to pass the vertical line test, but it's symmetrical because of the way the squaring works. When you square negative numbers, you get the same answers as when you square positive numbers, and that's basically what leads to that. So let's go ahead and graph it. Negative 4 comma negative 9. Negative 4 is here, and then negative, I can tilt my head here, negative 9 is right here. Something like this. <clears throat> negative 4 comma negative, sorry, ne negative 4 comma negative 9. I made a mistake. See, I make mistakes all the time. Negative 4 comma positive 9. So negative 4 is over here and positive 9, that's a 10, so the 9 is right here. Negative 1 comma negative 6 is right here. And then 0 comma negative 7 is right here. And then 1 comma negative 6 is right here. And then 4 comma 9 is a 4, and then a positive 9 is up here. Now, how do you connect the dots? This does not look like a, let me just make sure I did that right, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is not looking like a line. You can't put a line through here, and my my graph is not going to look perfect. So you know, don't don't uh, don't be too hard on me. But basically, it's going to come down like this. You're going to connect through these dots, and then it's going to go up, and then through like this. So if you're going to graph this, it's going to look something like that, which is exactly what I said a parabola. It's a nice skinny parabola, and it shifted down like I told you would happen. When you have a base function of an x squared, it's going to look like a parabola, but depending on what you have, uh, either in the constants or even if you insert other terms like this, it'll change the way it looks. It might be flipped upside down or whatever, but it's going to look like a parabola, which is exactly what we see here. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We see that, again, this is an x cubed, so we expect some kind of an s-shaped sort of deal. So if we put a negative 2 in here, negative 2, cubed plus 1. Here we have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. You have to be careful about that. What you have right here is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, and then you still have to add that 1 here. So what's going to happen here? This is going to give you a positive 4, right? But this positive 4 times negative 2, this is going to give you a negative 8, actually. So this negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. Now if I put a negative 1 here, cubed plus 1. It'll be negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive 1, but times a negative 1 again is negative 1. Negative 1 plus a positive 1 is 0, so I get a 0 right here. If I put a 0 in here, it'll be 0 cubed plus 1, which is going to give you 1. If I put a 1 in here, 1 cubed plus 1, this is 1 times 1 times 1, then you add the 1 there, you're just going to get 2. And if you put a 2 in here, 2 cubed, uh, plus 1. This is 2 times 2 times 2. That gives you 8 plus 1 is 9. Let me just double check my numbers here. And let's graph these guys. Negative 2 comma negative 7. Negative 2 comma, here's negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Like this. Here is negative 1 comma 0, negative 1 comma 0. Like this. Here is one, 0 comma 1. 0 comma 1 is right here. And then 1 comma 2. 1 comma uh, 2 is right here. Like this. And then you have 2 comma 9. So here is 2 all the way up here at 9. Now, here you have to be careful. You have to use a little bit of your knowledge of what these things are going to look like. You know it's going to be some kind of an S-shaped thing. Now, you might say this part of it forms a line. But how are you going to connect this up to this? I mean, there's really not a great way to do it with a single line. It's not going to be a line. It's certainly not going to be a parabola. So what it's really going to look like is something like this. It's going to go up from the bottom, then up through this first point, bend over, then up through this other point, and then it's going to go up through that point like this, which again is some kind of an S-shaped sort of thing, which is exactly 
what we said would look like. The basic of an X cubed function is an S shaped kind of, kind of deal, but depending on whatever else you have in there, coefficients or other terms, it's going to change the shape and the size of what you have. And you can see that's exactly what we have down here. So in this lesson, we've done a lot of important things. We actually reviewed what a function is. I talked about the most important shapes of functions, the x to the first power, the x to the second power, and the x to the third power. That's what I wish somebody had taught me a long time ago, that these things are always going to look kind of in a certain class, but depending on the exact equation you have, it might be slightly different shape, or maybe it's moved down or flipped upside down or something like that. And then we did the three examples to show you, in fact, one example of each of them so that you can see that what I'm saying is true. What I'd like you to do is practice these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get a little bit more practice with graphing functions using input-output tables.